Yo, yo, cut this side in and I'm on top. Cut this side in and I'm on top. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Cut this side in and I'm on top. This is for the ones that are here for the singing. <laughs> Some of you guys tell me that in the comments. You're like, I'm here for the singing. So I must sing. I have to sing. Cut this side in and I'm on top. Cut this side in and I'm on top. Yo, yo, yo. Ah. Yo yo yo! Could this one in a month, guys? Could this one in? Could this one? It's story time, nyana. But it has educacy, you know. It's educational. We like to keep it educational, informative, all those lovely things. And today, Wanamani has her life journal because the channel is about money and life, right? But everything that we share has a lesson every time whether it be financial or a life lesson right but before we get started before we get started <laughs> Namut, I had to do a double take ah! <laughs> I had to do a double take you know had to do a double take you know and then jazzy at the same time because hey 20,000 subscribers? Is that you guys? <gasps> no, I can't, someone. Oh, no, I can't, so guys. Doof, doof. <laughs> no, I can't, so. so, to celebrate every time when we have new subscribers, which will possibly be every day and every video, but no, when we want something, you know, to, like, we must just drink the thing, we must sip to it. So, whatever you're doing at home right now, let's, let's cheers. Just tip it to the screen. Cheers guys, I'm having coffee, okay? Maybe next time we'll have water, next time we'll have some spirits or, you know, tea. <laughs> Whatever it might be to celebrate the growth, I'd like to celebrate with you guys each time because you help to build this channel and you engage with me, you share, you like, you comment, all of those things. I'll always be grateful for that. Hey, Shkekani man, Shkekani, Shkekani Shungasali. Most of you watching are either working. Why did I eat something before I start speaking? So, most of you that are watching are either employed, unemployed, self employed, on your way to employment. Um, and there are certain jobs that are out there that people do that a lot of people might not be aware of, right? And I want to just take you through a journey of jobs that I've done. Hey, my hustle. Hey, it's funny. Hey, hey, before China and before every other thing that I'm going to do in my life, you guys will have this video as a reference that ah, this I used to be that girl that was offering us pieces of cheese there by the fridges of pick and pay or Woolworths to say try this thing and then buy it <laughs> we'll take it step by step from the first job that I have until now and I really would like to encourage you guys to whatever job you might be doing just let us know in the comment section maybe somebody will look at the job title and be like oh what does that job entail and maybe they'll do a bit more research and find out that oh to actually complete this job you maybe need to do a course in xyz right and maybe you don't need a degree per se or you don't need um a certain qualification or certain experience per se or that there's just a job like that and people can grow an interest in those things right um i'll say that my degree did help me get some jobs but some jobs Na na mbor na man Hey guys They were just jobs to get by jobs to you know just pay rent have food you know get about life Um let's start with when I started working right so okay Miguel is at UJ now I didn't get a bursary I'm not with Nasfas my mom is paying for my fees. She's paying for my living expenses and everything. And you, you get to UJ and you're like 80K on top of that. I don't know. Maybe 
maybe varsity is varsity and it's like the vibes are the same everywhere but hey <laughs> 80k oh no man yo people were wearing nice clothes hey people are dressed nice people look nice people have weaves and when are you just this basic guys are so simple t-shirts and shorts literally i need to find those pictures of me at apk in my first three years but now it's like oh am i gonna start asking my mom for clothes to buy me clothes and she's already taking care of so much because fees are expensive and she's paying for this and she's a single parent i think i think it was my aunt that had said um there's there's this thing called promotions if you guys know about the promotion ne? picture inserted right here this job ne? let me know let's say promotions confetti you know um so she tells me that no there's this job you the promotions and they're looking for new promoters not not the type of promoters that you guys this these ones these ones see this these ones so um they're like no we gotta go to Bryanston. hi Bryanston has always been in my blood you know the universe is calling me to Bryanston. who knows maybe I'll, I'll i'll settle down in Bryanston. who knows i don't know um so we went to this company uh they wanted promoters for a particular mobile company called ata at the time ata some of you guys might remember it and they needed a lot of promoters to like go to different stores be it shop right i think at the time they were doing mainly shop right and i don't know if they were doing other supermarkets as well but they needed us to like go and get people to sign up for the sim cards and sell them on the package and give people t-shirts the stock sweetie all these smelling and a little gifts you know for signing up and getting a free sim card and yeah recurring flickering the sim card etc so um we get there they tell us the brief so with promotions they tell you the brief that okay this is our client right the client can be anyone it can be like a food brand it can be um a clothing brand it can be whatever whatever brand it is that needs their product promoted and out there right and maybe they'll have like a particular area that oh we're going to do all supermarkets in this area or um it's going to be at different intersections the corner of a what what and what what we need promoters standing there handing out leaflets whatever it might be so when we go in for the briefing they tell us that oh this is the client and maybe the client also described what kind of person they're looking for and that company will look on their promoters lists that okay there are these sort of promoters and we can contact them for a job right so when we went there to the company we signed up we filled in the ap application form everything and then they call us for the first job which was uh, promoting for ata yeah i wasn't ready <laughs> i wasn't ready but you know what choppy job who's going to give you that money who's going to give you that money hmm and i did tell you guys that i dodged a lot of bullets and we didn't get into that one or in in that other video if you've been watching some of you caught to that part where i said i dodged a lot of bullets so part of dodging bullets is going to work for money okay mm. so um we get there yo 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 there's this table made of wood that we need to assemble in every store no it wasn't the 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 top platform i think was wood and then the other poles were like plastic you must carry this thing it is heavy you carry it into the store when you get there you must go in through the staff entrance you know um or go in the front ask for the manager let them know who you are and that you're there to promote and you know sometimes they're not so nice to you but you like they also have to sign your time sheet for you you know so you must just and go do your job okay and then finally when you've set up your table with the branding and you've got your t-shirt on and or the cap whatever the uniform is you must take a picture send it to the company they'll send it to the client there'll also be somebody who comes and checks an anonymous person who comes and checks to see if you're actually doing your job so now you must approach people 
must approach people get them to sign up get them to get a sim card whatever it is that you're selling maybe sometimes it's it's something that they have to taste or whatever it might be you must approach people you know some people better they'll just come to you because they see that oh there's something free that's up for grabs or there's something happening here but some people you'll approach them and they're just like mm, mm, I'm just, mm, mm, mm. and i understand but yeah it's a bit crushing for you to try and approach people and they're just like mm. so please guys when you see promoters in store now when you see promoters in store try and be a little nice try and find out oh what is it even if you don't sign up even if you don't taste the thing just be like oh okay you know we like okay try this lotion what 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 sometimes they have a free sample just take it it gives us it it, it gives us a confidence boost you know so that was my first job and i'll really say that that job really helped me build confidence um you guys might see how i'm speaking now um and yes it's pre-recorded but it it exposed me to how you can approach people right so i had to approach different people young old anyone who walked through that shop or any car that stopped at that intersection i had to be there by the windows there handing out leaflets handing out leaflets so um it built confidence it really did because remember you're also being watched and you're not going to get that money unless you do the job and i think most of them the price per hour because we were paid on an hourly basis it was round about maybe between minimum like 40 rand an hour some of them were paying like in the hundreds per hour but the ones that paid the most per hour were the alcohol um promotions where we had to work at night and as a student i don't have a car right now you must organize transportation and it was hectic but you know what everything was a learning curve and it it really pushed pushed me to be more confident but also to become that hustler you know it, it gave me it, it, it was like the train that started you know what mama you're in joburg you're seeing things you're seeing how people live you're seeing what people are doing keep pushing keep pushing life but it also distracted my studies because sometimes um you have to work on certain weekends and you're supposed to be studying and i'm like am i gonna miss out on getting 2000 something for this weekend's work which this money can sustain me for the month or am i gonna study so you take a risk you go and work and yeah i failed a few modules i'm sorry mom i'm so sorry you're failing a module at apk i yo it's expensive it's expensive um but i, I got my bills paid i bought my own clothes and i could help my mom out with that money and i'm glad i did the work what was the other job i wrote it all down so that job i feel like if you are a student right take up a part-time job like that where you 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 don't know who you're gonna meet you don't know which people you're gonna encounter it builds confidence as well and it's extra cash you know and i'm sure like the hourly rates now are probably um higher so maybe you can google search promotion companies in johannesburg promotion companies in durban etc and see what comes up sign up with them and start working start making that extra income while you are a student and i did that until i got um a more it's, it, it was a similar gig but it was more permanent in that it was contractual i think was it they gave three month contracts at a time and it was to promote um lg phones at different mobile uh network providers so mtn vodacom telcom salsi etc so they would allocate a mall to you right and in that mall you must go up and down to all these cell phone network stores talk to the customers sell them on the phone and get them to buy the phone you know once again i must approach people and sell them on this product you know and i'm still a student <laughs> and this is full-time work <laughs> guys when my mom hears about this but the money was good i was like okay so per month 
I'm gonna get X amount plus some commission based on the phones that I've sold. Okay, we can do this. I'll get my notes from my friends. I'll get my friends to help me out with certain things. <laughs> and I'm glad I did the job. Um, once again, like I said, it built my confidence, you know, um, and it exposed me to different work environments because you'll find that the stuff at Celsius are different to the stuff at Vodacom and at MTN and at Telcom and every t everywhere that I go I'm, I'm, I'm working I'm, I'm seeing older people young people and, and people that wa walk into cell phone network stores they all have different problems and you're just there to promote this product but you try and help them with that problem as well and you get into conversation with them and you find out what it is that they're doing in life you get inspired etc so the fact that I was putting myself out there I think it's the same thing that gave me the the confidence to even just say you know what I will go abroad I will go and work at these uh, different African countries that I've traveled to and worked at and we're getting to those jobs so we did four ways more uh, where we worked uh, for LG as a as a promoter and when company that had that gig was called Ligra, Ligra Marketing. Maybe they changed the, the name of the company or something. Um, they might still be in business, but they, they had more of those um, short-term contracts. So unlike the promoters where you have to wait to be called uh, for a weekend job or during the week or whatever, with uh, Ligra Marketing, I they had more like three month or six month contracts that they would get from their clients and then look for the right people to do the job right while at four ways I picked up a bad habit uh, because I mean during the week who's shopping honestly who's at the mall during the week not a lot of people so there aren't really that many phones to sell so I just like browse stroll past some shops here and there look try things on and then that's when I yeah started liking clothes that I couldn't afford that were then encouraged to me to buy by obviously the the people that work in the store and like no just open an account ah I qualify for an account yeah you work right you have a payslip right I'm like Mm -hmm. so open an account and yeah that's where my clothing account story started with that job because it was I started with one account uh, which one was it Busby is it Busby group yeah started with that one the one where you can buy it forever new you can buy it um, okay that's the first store I bought at it's forever new and Anyone who has a Busby account, I think you know. Mango. You can buy it mango. You can buy it um can you buy it Aldo? I don't know. But yeah, Busby Group. And after that, another account and another one and another one and another one. So it became I just I just started shopping. Essentially. When I was working at Four Ways and it was all accounts. Angisha Nami was also feeling like a person who can afford now because I'm getting this basic salary plus commission, you know? Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, I got the job at... Is it EF? <clears throat> no. At a company called Web Help. And it was a call center job. And this one was uh, a more long-term contract. Not three months like the the LG one that I had uh, promoting there. Um, this one now was customer service, uh, providing customer service to clients that are not, uh, for a particular cell phone network provider to clients that are not in South Africa, that are in the UK. Okay. So, yeah, this job. Yeah, yo, this job. If you've ever worked there let us know 
Yo, the calls, the calls, the pressure, the environment. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. I, I really tried to stick it out, but my studies were struggling. I'm still not finished at UJ. Yeah, still not finished. <laughs> my, I could see that, you know what, this one is really taking up a lot of my time. It's really taking up a lot of my energy. It's draining me. Studying is becoming difficult. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. If I'm ever going to graduate, this is now around 2015. I should have graduated in 2015, but I graduated in 2016. <laughs> I'm like, if I continue with this, I, will, I won't graduate. Not that I won't, but it will take longer. So I'm like, let me just retire this and go finish my studies. Let me, let me just focus. Okay, I focused. I finally passed. But even before I passed, I had gotten another job. <laughs> <laughs> when you're used to money guys you uh, uh, and used to having your own money used to working for your money nobody's gonna give you money you must go work or if somebody's gonna give you money it's gonna come with conditions hey dodging bullets mm. so um i got this job now <laughs> remember guys i think also i trapped myself with those clothing accounts that I had that I accumulated while I was still working in four ways I'm like oh how am I gonna pay for this so I went back to that initial job the promotions one where you work on weekends and stuff but now the money is not good enough for me anymore you know and I have all these clothing accounts where I need to pay up hmm? Hmm? so what I did then was I asked a friend who was working at EF in Bryanston again not so far from four ways where I just come from right and at EF it was online teaching but center based you actually go to a center an office you log onto the computer and you're teaching people over the computer and I was like oh please let me know when they're hiring and so I can you know send my CV and shame she really helped me thank you my friend thank you so much uh, because I, I, I got exposed to quite a lot of things at that job and Yeah, with this job now I was gonna be teaching English online to students that are all over the world They could be in South America as in Argentina Brazil uh, They could be in Asia. They could be in Europe. It could be adults. It could be teenagers, right? but mainly adults and yeah you teach them online the curriculum or slides that you need to use when you're teaching online it's already there when i must just show up and teach show up and teach and i went from working day shift there to working night shift to make more money to working night shift on weekends to make more money and now i'm in a relationship you know guys working night shift on a weekend you know, when I'm at work, when I'm going to work, my person is coming home. Hey, what a life. But I was pushing, man. I was pushing life, man. It must work. Yeah. Um, but I did graduate while I was at that job. In 2016, I graduated. And I had already started that at that job. So, hey, finally, graduation. Um, and I worked there for two years. I don't know. I told myself that I only want to work there for two years. And then after two years, I just want to go with where life will take me next, but I don't want to do more than two years. And I was kind of like that with a lot of jobs that I did. I was like, I want to do this thing for not more than two years. I just would tell myself that. And with a lot of things that you tell yourself, if it follows a particular action as well, then Voila, tada, you're not there in two years. So, um, I then, because I'm teaching students that are in Asia, they're also saying, hey, why don't you come and teach in my country? Come and teach in China, come and teach in China. And people at the, at the center where we were teaching online, they also like, some of them are leaving. They're going to China. I'm like, oh okay this is interesting how does this work right but i don't know I, I felt like at that time in 2016 
it wasn't really my time yet to go to China. I still wanted to maybe do something else before I leave, but maybe I was kind of just scared. Um, maybe I was still thinking about the whole being a flight attendant with Fly Emirates. I was kind of still having those regrets about uh, being an OP and not doing it. But I was like, okay, come now, come, let's go, let's go to China. But no, I don't know, I wasn't there yet. Then a friend was working for this NGO, an NGO that um, deals with refugee resettlement, right? So this NGO, we travel to different African countries, okay? They, they, they have, they actually, is that the next job? Mm. They actually um, are global. But obviously now we are the sub-Saharan sub Africa office, right? So we would travel to different African countries. We would go to like very remote areas uh, of those countries and work with refugees. The refugees would be trained about their resettlement to the United States. So it was a US funded um, non-profit organization that had bases in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia and other uh, continents on, and countries and so forth. So I was in the South African office and when my friend came to me with this one, I had passed my two year mark at EF and remember my two year rule that I had. Um, and I was like, ah, it pays less, but cause uh, at EF I was now, I was a girl, I was the girl, I was the girl, you know, <laughs> I was earning. And that job, I, I forgot to mention, that job helped me to pay off those five was it five or six clothing accounts that i had had that st stupid debt that i had that i just spent and spent and spent and spent and yeah so when i was there i tackled i tackled that debt one by one by one by one until i was done and then i started i started the the savings habit because i'm like look at what i'm earning now look at what i used to earn before come on lovely lady you're earning more now you can do more almost bought a car but i'm glad i didn't because everybody around me everybody in that job was buying cars guys all these cars they were being bought left right and center and i was also almost sold into that like Hey man, this business of taking taxis every day at Nord and Nakona, it doesn't drop me off at Nord when I'm coming from uh, West Dean. I'm, I have to walk to Nord and then sit there waiting for the taxi to get full because I'm working night shift, remember? And then in the morning, I'm so tired. I must take this taxi to Nord. From Nord, walk to Brie every morning. Ah, yo, for two, for more than two years, that was my life. Because every job in Hamagama takes it, guys. I didn't have a car. Okay, uh, I've never had a car. I've never owned a car. I've, I, I don't, I've, I don't know. If, I don't know, but I've never had a car. Yeah. So, um, my friend says to me, oh, it's been two years. You're saying you're kind of done with this job. Um, where I work, they're actually hiring and I'll send you the job description. Hey, as I'm reading through this job description, they are saying working in remote villages, remote areas under difficult conditions in, in Nanda. And I'm like, where are we going? But I'm like, okay, let me apply. I applied. And you know, being prompt with things, guys, when it comes to applying, don't try and find out, Guri, when is the closing date, final date. Apply, be quick, you know? So I did exactly that. They wanted a cover letter. I typed it out, did it, applied. I was quick, sharp. I get called for an interview. I go for the interview. They interview me and um, they tell me that, nope, we are we want you for the job. At the time, I had saved up for my first international uh, vacation. I, yeah, yeah. Ah! Saved up with my then partner 
and we went to Vietnam it was really nice and I told the new employer that you I'm going to Vietnam when I come back from Vietnam I'll be able to start on the job and they're like okay then I started working there and the first trip that we took was to Tanzania yeah just a Tanzania Tanzania Mbabonile anyway i just had to do that i just had to yeah we went to tanzania it was nice to land in dar es salaam you know that's the capital of tanzania i was with my friend my lovely friend and hi we stayed at a nice hotel in dar es salaam we it was different it was like yay, 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 yay. you know um if you've never left south africa and went to another african country you we tend to assume you know but when you get there you're like oh okay so we went to dar es salaam and while in dar es salaam it's like okay we, we're just here for the weekend we're actually going to go to another village that's where we're going to do the actual work okay I get ah no man. We landed ne? at this airport in Kigoma. That's the name of the place where we landed. And I was like, is this an airport or is this somebody's house? We're stopping here for refuel. What's going on, man? And it was an airport. And it looked like you know those four room houses in Soweto? But they just had like big windows they carried bags over that window somebody had a book to write down everybody's name and passport number literally literally went on a long road trip to where we're going village life um pure uh, pure yeah it was it was a culture shock for me and i just started getting used to the job falling into the role and i got to see how people really struggle and people really have nothing like yo yo that job that job touched me that job really really t- touched me and it was it was nice to connect with people and change their lives in some sort of way and yeah i did that job for two no 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 for a year about a year close to a year and i went to countries like malawi zambia kenya um rwanda um if i'm forgetting any country but yeah essentially i went to those african countries and each time it was an experience after an experience after an experience maybe we can get into that story time about the experiences that i had there but it was it, it even though they were it was paying me less almost not half but a little more than half of what i was getting at ef i was like i want to do this job there's something i'm going to learn here there's something that is going to come up from me a i'm going to be traveling you know b i'm going to be around different cultures different people there's something i'm going to learn from this and then yeah on the last trip on the job when i was in rwanda remote village again yay yay I was like, no, this is it, hey. Um I'm going to start applying for jobs in China. Yeah, I'm going to China. That's it. And yeah, after a month of being more than a month of being away in Rwanda and Kenya, I came back, I resigned, I put in my resignation, and I said, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for yeah, the experience essentially. And I was on my way. I was starting the documentation process. to come to China. And here I am. I'm in China. It's been 3 years. To your rule you will be mine. Um COVID has kept me here for a whole full 3 years. Yo guys, it's been it's been quite a journey. Umuntu can't leave and come back. I've never left ever since I came here in 2019. I have never set foot on a plane going to South Africa. and it's been so long and i miss home and i think that's where the next phase of my life leads 
it leads back to South Africa and when that leading happens I'll announce it to you guys and yeah um, I still have some time here in China but the, the journey is coming to an end I like moving on in life I like moving on I don't like settling into something and feeling like this is my bread and butter and there's no other way nothing else no 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 I just need when I gather up stamina and bravery most of the time then I'm able to move on to the next thing and just like with the um, NGO job where I was like it pays me less but there's so much I'm gonna learn and take away from this and I went for it right same thing with China now I'm gonna be like Ish, me gonna get the money that I get here and go see I'm goopy <laughs> but does that mean I stay here and not leave mm -mm. I'll just have to be brave so those have been the jobs that Tessa has done in her life um, let us know guys what jobs have you done in your life which job like me did you do in your life and yeah any information that you can share please share with the community and if there's anything that i have to share as well i'll definitely link it in the description box be it a link from one of the companies that i've worked for or anything description box is right there just click that down arrow and then you'll see everything there. And once again, for those of you who make it all the way to the end, show me that you did by leaving either a white heart or a pink heart. Okay? <laughs> Thank you guys. Nakansa. Goodbye. See you on the next one.